All right, folks, so the FCC has made it official and they have established a $35 fee for new licenses, special event licenses, um, license renewal, and for vanity call sign changes. Let's get into it. I'll include these links below. So here is an article from the ARRL that talks about FCC reduces proposed amateur radio application fee to $35. And uh, I think that some liberties were taken here uh, when coming up with a title for this particular article. I think a more appropriate title would be FCC establishes $35 fee uh, for amateur radio. But, uh, you know, that's six of one, half a dozen of another. I guess it's a matter of perspective. It says the FCC has agreed with ARRL and other commenters that the proposed $50 fee for certain amateur radio applications was too high to account for the minimal staff and involvement in these applications. And that was one of the things that we covered back when I did a video announcing the proposed fee structure. And uh, I'm glad that they agreed that the $50 fee was a little bit too high. It certainly seemed a little bit out of place. There were a lot of folks that were on both sides of that issue and felt that $50 was just fine. But uh, it does look like the FCC agreed. And then it says here on December 29th, the FCC scaled back to, to $35. The fee for new license application, a special temporary authority, a rule waiver, waiver request, or a renewal application and vanity call sign application. It says this fall, the ARRL filed comments in firm opposition to the FCC proposal to impose a $50 fee on amateur radio license and application fees and urged its members to follow suit. And in our last video, we also posted a link where people could file for comment. And it looked like a lot of people had done that. So that is a good thing. And maybe that's part of the reason why we're now looking at $35 instead of $50. Um, but $35 is the new reality. It said that uh, the FCC noted that uh, ARL, ARRL and many individual uh, commenters argued there was no cost-based justification for the fees in amateur radio service. And, uh, you know, I'm not 100% sure of that or not. Um, I don't necessarily know that it needs to be 100% free, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit. But um, it says the proposal is contained in a notice of proposed rulemaking, an NPRM MD docket 20-270. Uh, and it was called Repack Airways for Yielding Better Access for Users of Modern Services Act of 2018. I'm not sure what that means, but it sounds to me like selling off spectrum to large companies and corporations. They also call this the Ray Bombs Act. They said after reviewing the record and, uh, and including extensive comments filed by amateur radio licensees, based on a revised analysis of the cost processing, mostly automated process discussed in our methodology section, we adopted a $30 to $5 application fee. Uh, here it says the FCC received more than 197,000 personal license applications in 2019. They were not all just for amateur ham radio. They included uh, GMRS as well. Uh, I did some quick math on that, and it was just shy of $7 million that they would have gotten in revenue at $35 per. Um, some folks were also saying that uh, amateur radio provides emergency services and as a result should be exempt from any license fee structure. Um, and what they said here is, is that they were not able to uh, provide an exemption where none previously existed. And I guess that is a limitation of, of law, and, and maybe that makes sense. And I also personally don't see um, exemption of amateur radio operators um, from a fee structure, if a fee structure is put in place because of uh, public service uh, and emergency communications. Uh, many, uh, if not most, of the amateur radio operators do not participate in that. Also, when applying for your licensing fee, um, you don't know if you're going to do amateur radio emergency communications or not. Maybe you plan to, but the, the, that actually happening doesn't make sense to me. Also, if, if I use my cell phone uh, in an emergency situation, do I get exemption from paying taxes on my monthly bill? I, I don't really see this as a, as a, as a solid argument. But uh, maybe, maybe you do, and you can comment below. Anyway, I'll include a link to this article below, and then uh, you can take a look at it. Uh, I did want to share a couple of other articles real quick. Uh, this is from the SWLing Post, and it says the FCC adopts a $35 license fee for amateur radio service applications. That seems like a more appropriate title uh, to me than the one posted by the ARRL. 
And I, here is a breakdown of the different cost structure uh, that we talked about. New license, temporary authority, rule waivers, renewal, and vanity call sign. Uh, one thing that I mentioned in the last video, and I'll mention in this one, um, I, re I really do think the vanity call sign is something that does need to have have a license structure or, or fee structure around it. Um, you know, I've talked to people who have 10 different vanity call sign requests in place, um, it just seems a little crazy to me. Um, I definitely understand the desire to get vanity call signs, but when some people constantly are changing their call sign or applying for all of these, um, that does seem like it creates administrative overhead that's not necessarily needed. I can't change my uh, driver's license number, for example. Um, now I don't use that as a personal identifier. Um, the government does, so maybe, maybe that's a bad argument, but uh, to me, that one's a little a little bit out there. The last article that I wanted to share, and I felt that this was the best one that I had read, and it's by KB6NU. Uh, and this website's actually a really good website. You should you should check it out. Um, and this talked a little bit more about the the, the dialogue back and forth during the, during this process. Um, here it says they also addressed the other concerns brought up by the nearly 4,000 people who commented on the amateur radio license fee. So uh, thanks to everybody who did that. Numerous commenters suggest that amateur radio license should be exempt or are exempt under Section 8D1 of the Act. We disagree and note as a starting point that the Commission has no ability to create an exemption where none presently exists. And we kind of covered that. Um, thus, if an exemption exists, it must be contained within the wording of 8D1. It seems like legalese to me, uh, but I'm not a lawyer. But what it's saying is, is that uh, since Congress did not specify uh, specifically exempt amateur radio, they cannot do it. Um, the radio also disagreed with the argument that amateur radio service should be exempt because amateur radio operators provide a, a emergency and public communications. Uh, we covered that. Um, here's the part that I wanted to cover. It says they also addressed the argument that it will discourage younger people and others who may not be able to afford the fee from entering the hobby. And this is where I took the, the biggest issue. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a, I guess, a middle-aged man and I have a job and $35 fee really isn't that big of a deal to me. But I have uh, friends that uh, that work with kids to get them on the air and get them licensed. And a lot of times they don't have the money to do that or the parents aren't willing to spend it. And I think that's a little bit of a, of a shame. And then also there are older folks that, uh, you know, maybe they're living uh, Social Security check to Social Security check. And when it comes time to renew their license, say, you know, 35 bucks really isn't worth it. I kind of listen. Maybe I'll just listen to short wave. Um, you know, I don't, I don't use my license that often. And then they, they leave the hobby or the service. And I, th I think that that's really discouraging. It says the ARRL and many individuals, uh, individual commenters additionally claim that the proposed fee will har harm public interest by discouraging people who are younger and becoming licensed or causing people who are older and living in a fixed income to leave the service, um, depriving operators of their skills and experience. These commenters explain that participation in amateur radio service can be an entry point to science, technology, engineering, and math careers, which is true. You get younger folks interested in the technology, and uh, maybe it'll help them out later in life. They also note that amateur, license, uh, amateur licensees have driven innovation and communications with other technologies. And I think that's all true. But what, what I think is missing from the statement is the older folks, and they're not looking for an entry point into a career. So that that statement doesn't seem like it addresses both sides of that that argument they say while they agree that participation in amateur radio service offers important public interest benefits that determination does not alter our obligation under uh, ray bombs act i really like to understand that word obligation um i didn't read all 70 some pages of the ray bombs act so i'm not an expert on it and even if i did i'm not a lawyer so i don't i don't really know what they mean by obligated but it seems to me that uh $35 could have been different. Um, and then there could also maybe potentially been rules. I don't know if it's an exemption or not uh, for people under the age of 18 or over the age of 65 or something along those lines. And then uh, here's the, the last piece that I found really interesting is that in my last video, we talked about paying the fee and getting something back for it, more than just your license. Uh, the process is largely automated, and so there's not a lot of manual intervention, and I understand that their automation technology does cost money to implement and maintain. But um, you know what I, what I saw here is a lot of people were saying that uh, maybe they can use this for better enforcement, better awareness, and better training. It says, um, these commenters argue that if the commission adopts an application fees for the service, it should be used, use the fees to benefit the licensees. For example, by taking a more robust reinforcement actions against unlawful operators. 
While we appreciate the commenters' diligent advocacy for their service, we remind them that the commission does not have discretion on how to use the application fees, which must be deposited uh, in the U.S. Treasury. I get that the commission doesn't have that discretion, but it would be nice to see a statement from the FCC um, about how this fee is going to be used to improve the service and make it more accessible to folks. Um, so that's a, that's a little bit of a disappointing comment from my perspective. And then down here it says the date on which the FCC will start charging the fee has not yet been set, but will be announced at least 30 days in advance. The FCC needs time to develop the procedures detailing how and when the fees will be collected. So what I'm going to say is, is that go out there and apply for your license, apply for your vanity call sign, and, uh, and see what you can do before the fee gets implemented. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, recommendations, or suggestions, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks.